Well, the Asian markets, they have opened up under pressure following sig significantly weaker than expected Chinese trade data that came over the weekend. Now, China's exports in November, that rose by roughly around 5.5%. The expectations were for a rise of around 10% out. So that was a bit, bit of a miss. And the import growth was the slowest we have seen since October 2016. That came in at around 3%. So on the back of that weak data, the U.S. markets as well ended in the red. Asian markets are struggling early this morning. The Nikkei is down close to around 2%. Remember, the Nikkei has two factors going for it. One is that, in fact, the global queues are not very, very positive. The Chinese trade data is not looking good for all the Asian markets. And besides that, the Nikkei is also reacting to the dollar yen. That it was holding at around 113 and a half odd. There is, uh, you know, some safe haven buying. And on the back of that, uh, you are seeing actually some strength on the yen. Because you're seeing strength on the yen, that market is selling off. It's down close to 400 points. But the problem is across the board, actually. The Kospi is down close to around a percent odd. And both the other couple of markets had opened up with a bit of a negative bias. So the Taiwanese index, as well as the Straits, both of them down close to around eight tenths of a percent to around a percent. The SGX Nifty for starters is indicating we're likely to start off with a cut off around 100 points. Remember, if you pull up the intraday chart of the Nifty, in Friday's trading session, we saw a sharp up move in the last hour of trade. You know, the markets were factoring in a favorable outcome for the NDA-led uh, uh, government at the center. So on the back of that, maybe giving some part of that as well uh, back. That's the chart that we're talking about in Friday's trading session. So giving some uh, part of that back. Let's see what happens if you get that dip of around 130 points. Is that bought into? That'll be quite interesting. Okay, so we queues domestically and globally as well because on Wall Street, the U.S. stocks finished sharply lower on Friday as trade concerns and a downbeat jobs report led the S&P as well as the Nasdaq lower to post their biggest weekly decline since March. Now, the Dow ended lower by over 550 points, erasing its gain for the year. Remember, the jobs growth slowed in November amid fears that economic growth is really losing steam. And even if you look at the non-farm payrolls, that increased by 155,000 for the month of November and that is versus the expectation of close to 200,000 while the unemployment rate again held at 3.7 percent its lowest since what we have seen in 1969. In fact on that note let's hear out what experts have to say regarding this shop's data and the expectation from the Federal Reserve meeting going forward. Remember the next meeting is on 18-19 December and all eyes are on that particular meeting. This was very much in line with what we're looking for. You're a little bit weak in the payroll number, 155. It might be nicer if it was a little higher than that. But the unemployment rate, you take it out to an extra tenth, it did hit a new 49-year uh, you know, low. Labor market's tightening. I mean, what's going on here is the economy is shifting down from third gear down to second gear. Everybody should be calm about this. I think, I, I think people are getting nervous about it, but that's really what's going on here. We are starting to sh shift down in growth. We know that the fourth quarter is going to be weaker, and we're moving into a year that's going to be weaker. That's not too weak to start with, but at the end of the year, we have a lot more headwinds, and we could change that. We could get more tailwinds if we get some change in the trade situation and the tariff situation, but right now, we're starting to see the corrosive effects of trade creep into the numbers, and we're also seeing some of the issues going on in the auto sector. Vehicle production was down a bit. That'll be down even even more as we go into the year because of the allocation of cars versus trucks and the need to get rid of a lot of car production instead of SUV production in the U.S. I think the Federal Reserve should absolutely raise rates in December. They should raise in March and in June. I hope actually they stay at neutral because the problem is the moment the Federal Reserve panics here, everybody's going to panic. And so uh, while I, I, I get it that the economy will be, it was, you know, will grow more slowly next year, there wouldn't actually be anything, any problem with having a slightly lower federal funds rate by the end of next year. I don't think the Fed should do it. I think the Fed should move to neutral, stay there, and just try and let this, uh, this expansion coast for as long as it can. I do expect the Fed will do the December rate hike. That's a doubling of interest rates in a year. They're still low, but that interest expense is going up. And I think that's where the Fed is starting to look for some of these tipping points that might not be what they once thought would be at a neutral rate. So some things in the economy we've extended and pretended in many aspects of the corporate sector. And when we should have been restructuring earlier in the cycle when we could have absorbed it, a lot of it is going to be pushed out to rate hike when rate hikes are only a little bit higher. And I think that's one of the concerns that the Fed has. And it's certainly one of the concerns that I have going forward. Well, there were worries last week about the European market. Some of them had moved to a two-year low. 
Well, in Friday's uh, trading session, a couple of those markets ended in the green, both the FTSE and the CAC. They ended with some gains, but the DAX is struggling. That's trading at a near two-year low. In fact, that was down close to around two-tenths of a percent by the time it wound up. So let's move straight then uh, to some further news that came in from Europe. Uh, the political developments in Germany is what we're talking about. Now, the Christian Democratic Union Party, or the CDU, has named a new leader over the weekend. Uh, Anna Gert Kramp uh, Karenberg, she is a prodigy of the current leader, Angela Merkel, and is widely seen as a symbol of the continuity in the party. Here's a report coming in from Hamburg, Germany. Angela Merkel's CDU here in Germany voted for continuity. The new party leader is AKK, Annegret kamp karrenbauer who also was dubbed Mini Merkel in the race to that vote. So, meaning that most likely a political earthquake in Germany can be avoided next year because the Grand Coalition probably can work quite uh, stable also with that new party leader. Having said that, though, she's probably also leaving her mark on the future of the CDU because she's now the woman on top of the party and most likely also the next candidate for chancellor in Germany. Okay, that was about the political developments in Germany. Let's talk about the political developments in UK then, because on to the Brexit developments, British Prime Minister Theresa May will press on with Brexit vote tomorrow in the House of Commons. Sri Jekaraja is here with what to expect. British Prime Minister Theresa May will press on with a Brexit vote on Tuesday, this even though it looks like it's headed for defeat in the House of Commons. Now, over the weekend, the Sunday Times reporting Theresa May would announce a delay in order to get a better deal from the EU, but Brexit Minister Stephen Barclay is saying the government is focused on Tuesday's vote. The vote is going ahead, and that's because it is a good deal. It's the only deal. This has been a hard-fought negotiation over two years, with the Prime Minister working day and night to make the case. And the risk for those who say simply go back uh, and ask again, the risk is, mm. well, that isn't necessarily a one-way street. The French, the Spanish and others will turn around if we seek to reopen the negotiation and ask, and ask for more. Stuff. Barclay also saying May could still stay on as Prime Minister even if the deal was voted down. Thousands of protesters in the meantime joined a pro-Brexit march in central London on Sunday to protest against the deal. Well, turning attention to the currency space then, the US dollar weakens after the weaker than expected monthly job report was released on Friday, suggesting that the Fed Reserve will tighten monetary policy at a slower pace than earlier expected. Meanwhile, some safe haven yen buying as well that's why, in fact, we are seeing some strength on the yen in comparison to the US dollar. That as well has moved to around 112.4 odd mark. And in the world of commodities, the oil prices rise after OPEC and its allies reach an agreement to slash production for the first six months of 2019. The OPEC producers have agreed to cut output by 800,000 uh, barrels per day, while allied nations, including Russia, will reduce production by 400,000 barrels per day. The brand currently hovering around that $62.21 per barrel mark. Well, time to slip into a short break. You come back, we'll tell you all the cues and news that are stacked up for us when we open up for trade in the next couple of hours. Don't go anywhere.